I'm not the most active guy out there. I like to go camping, fishing, and hunting, but you won't see me run or do something like hiking. But my doctor said I had high blood pressure and cholesterol and suggested I meet with a nutritionist and a trainer to get my health back on track. I know I like them golden arch fries, and I know damn well I ain't a gym dude. So, I decided to learn to cook for myself and start walking. For the next six months after that doctor's appointment, I learned how to cook basic meals like chicken, rice, and veggies, and started walking some hiking trails since I like being in the woods. I searched Google for nearby trails and found a few, and I alternated between four of them. For the first six months, this satisfied me. I liked walking, so this was the best way to get myself back in shape without busting my cap on my motivation, you know? Walking's fun and not too demanding, and I did lose a few pounds. I don't know yet about the cholesterol, but I'm pretty sure this helped my blood pressure. And with all of that being said, six months of walking the same four trails can get boring. So I tried to find a few more that wouldn't be too far. I found an interesting one two towns over. Sure, it would take me about 45 minutes to get to it by car, but it was worth exploring, and it was mildly more challenging too. According to the two Instagrammers I saw pictures of in the article, the trail had some hills and beautiful scenery. There was even a map with lots of pictures to tell you where to see the best spots. Couldn't hurt to give it a look. With that in mind for my next walk, I packed a few granola bars and a half a bottle of water. This trek would likely be a bit longer than those I was used to. I usually go for trails that are under 4 miles, and this one was close to 5. It would be a bit of a challenge, but I knew I could do this one a few times before growing bored if I liked it. There were even a lot of little side trails I could take on this one. One led to a small waterfall place where I could go for a swim if I wanted, but maybe I'd do that in the summer. Hell, it was a bit cold mid-September to swim. I printed the map too, in case I lost phone service on the trail. It's always better to be safe than sorry, right? Once I was ready, I filled my backpack nicely and drove off to the new trail. I arrived and I was pleasantly surprised that the parking lot was almost empty. It meant that I would have the path almost all to myself. I don't really like meeting people when I'm covered in sweat and red in the face, though I've been getting better with all that. This trail had hills, so I didn't expect to look like a health champion. It was better if I could, you know, not meet with people. At least I thought it would be better. But God, I would have loved meeting people when I needed it. I'd been walking for about 35 minutes, taking small detours by trails that were marked on the map. I discovered plenty of nice spots and I noted those down so I didn't walk them again on future walks. I took a short break and leaned against a tree, drank some water, and looked around me. It was beautiful out here. The sun would be up for a few hours, its rays filtered through the branches gracing me with their warmth. And then I saw the trail. Well, it's more of a path. One that wasn't identified on my map. So you can guess that my curiosity was instantly piqued. I drew across on my map where the new trail was and decided to follow it. It was a bit of a crude path. There were still branches in the way and it wasn't maintained like the rest of the trails I had been on. I thought this would be a great picnic spot, or maybe I was about to find something that other Instagrammers hadn't seen yet. This was definitely a trail though, it wasn't just my imagination. For the most part the ground was clear of leaves, and outside of a few roots poking out, it wasn't that hard to walk on. Let's say if the other well-maintained trails were easy level, this one was a medium. I climbed up a small hill following the trail and reached an open area with a really nice view. It wasn't that elevated that I could see the entire forest, but I could see the trail where I came from, about a hundred feet below. 
It was an excellent trail for camping or picnic, but I wasn't sure if the state allowed it here. It was more in nature than the well-maintained trails. I explored around and saw that the trail continued a bit further, so I decided to continue. I calculated that I would have enough time to walk for another 20 minutes or so before I had to go back before the sun would start to set. As I continued down the path, a wave of coldness washed over me. It felt like I just entered another room, one with air conditioning at max intensity. I looked over my shoulder and could still see the open area. I blamed it on the shade because of the trees, but I felt cold, just so incredibly cold. Not to the point where my teeth were chattering but to the point you're wondering if the weather had just dropped a handful of degrees in a minute. And I walked a bit faster to compensate and fight it. And within a minute or two, I felt somewhat okay again. I mean, I didn't feel as cold, but I wasn't back to normal. I almost regretted wearing shorts, but I knew my trekking was coming to an end anyway. As I advanced, I realized something was off with that side trail. All I could see was green scenery, dense foliage, and healthy trees if I looked behind me. Ahead of me? Not so much. Most trees looked dead or on their way to die. Their bark was dark and cracked weirdly. And the few trees that had leaves didn't have green ones. Mostly the kind you see in autumn, like red and oranges. Which was a bit weird considering we were just mid-September, and the rest of the trail was still bright green. It felt like I had just stepped in Halloween Town, to be honest. Which the kid in me would have been incredibly excited about, but my reasonable thinking found it a little weird. Maybe something was wrong with the soil here that made the trees die faster and I should probably turn back. Well, at least that's what I thought about before I heard a woman's voice singing, and a soft one at that. Now, I couldn't really make out the words she was singing, but I wanted to see what she looked like. I mean, surely a voice so beautiful could only fit someone of equal beauty. I found this logic as flawed in many ways, but hell, I was still curious enough to refrain from turning back too soon. I followed the sound of the voice until I saw the first tombstones. Then I stopped. Tombstones? Upon closer examination, there was only an X and a year engraved in the stone. I was also puzzled because I didn't remember seeing anything about a cemetery here, near the trail. I pulled my map out of my bag and tried to figure it out, but it only indicated an elevation where I was. I mean, technically, this was uphill. Now, I might not be the best at reading maps, but where I was standing didn't seem to have been marked down at all. Which didn't make sense. If there were so many public trails around, how come nobody came across the cemetery? It wasn't a big one, but it still should have been on record. I could still hear the woman singing from the other side of the cemetery. She was probably behind the two massive stone pillars where I could see a small building. Probably a mausoleum or an ancient stone chamber at the very least. I checked a few more tombstones, but most were broken and no names were ever indicated. Only years. The most damaged one was almost completely on the ground. I can only see the last number for the year, but the more tombstones I checked, the more I realized something linked them. All of these stones had been erected with a year difference for more than a hundred years. No headstone had the same year engraved on them. From left to right and front to back, I could read the years from what I guessed was 1906 to 219. As I walked through the unmarked cemetery, I slowly started to focus less and less on the woman singing. I could still hear it, but there was a growing knot in my stomach. With each passing year and passing tombstone, I was growing colder. By 2000, 
I felt the tip of my fingers tingling and couldn't warm them up. At 2005, my heart leapt out of my chest. I felt a firm, icy grip on the back of my neck. I screamed with everything I had so much that I was sure I would hack out a lung. When I turned around, there was nothing behind me. I could only hear my heart beating in my chest and feel its thumping resonate in the back of my throat. It took me a few seconds to realize that the woman wasn't singing anymore, and when I did realize, I tried to turn back. I swear I tried, but when I looked in front of me, I couldn't see the trail where I came from. The dark tree's bark looked even darker, and the empty branches nodded together in a way that made it impossible for me to find the trail. It's almost like the trail itself had disappeared, but it was fine, right? I mean, after all, the first tombstone I saw was 1912, so I guess that if I found that tombstone, I could enter the forest from there and find my way back to the open area, and then the other trail. I walked through the rows of tombstones, eyes darting left and right. 1998, 1989, 1974, and I kept going until I saw 1912 but there wasn't any trail in front of the tombstone, and the sun was starting to set, too. And then, she started singing again. The voice I found beautiful and haunting. I stared at the sky as it turned orange and dashed towards the voice. If I wasn't alone in that cemetery, then maybe I could get some help to find the trail. All I needed was getting to the mausoleum. Asked the lady and then, well, turned back. The mausoleum's doors were ajar and a warm breeze came from the crack. I was so cold that it felt very, very inviting. Despite being so close, I still couldn't make out the words she was singing. It was definitely in another tongue or another language, but don't ask me to identify which one. Uh, my best guess would be Latin, and I would probably be wrong about it. And so I took a step forward and I entered the door. I saw her form at the other end of the mausoleum. She was kneeling, wearing a long black dress that fit nicely to her curve. It was slightly open in the back, revealing her fair skin. She looked pretty, even from the back. But I felt like my heart was about to leap out of my chest out of fright. The sight of her backside put me in such a state of terror that my knees buckled, and I had to hold myself to the door frame to stay standing. There was a crushing pressure on my shoulders, as if someone put their entire weight on them, and it was trying to force me to kneel as well. She wasn't even acknowledging my presence, and when I tried speaking, the only noise escaping my mouth was a quiet whisper. I could see my breath, too. And I just remember thinking, when did it become so cold? And where was that warm breeze from? Now, I hadn't fully entered the mausoleum. I realized my feet were still on the other side. I felt that if I stepped inside wholly, I wouldn't be able to turn back can't explain why, but I felt like I was being baited, almost hunted in a way. Um, excuse me, miss? I called out, voice weak as I slowly pulled myself together and took a step back. She again was not acknowledging me. Um, <clears throat> excuse me? This time I sounded a bit harsher than I intended to. The voice stopped singing and she turned slightly toward me. I could see her dark face shielding her face like a curtain and the tip of her nose. I saw the glow of the brightest yellow eyes I'd ever seen, similar to what you'd see on a bastard black cat. And for a fraction of a second, she turned around. For a fraction of a second, her beautiful face was nothing but a skull with two dark holes for eyes and it felt like she was staring straight into my soul. But it only lasted for less than a second. The woman's voice was back to normal, 
and she stood up and took a few steps toward me. She was the most beautiful woman I'd ever seen. But the coldness seeping inside the very marrow of my bones with each step she took forward was enough of a warning for me. In the same moment that I started turning around, I saw her face distort into something so ugly it would send shivers down the spine of the hardest of men, and I did not wait to ask for her name or number. I ran with everything I had through the rows of tombstones as a deafening high-pitched scream pierced through the atmosphere. She sounded like I'd just eviscerated her, and I felt her pain as she screamed. I ran through the cemetery and into the woods, uncaring about the branches that slashed at me. I finally found my way back to a trail. I finally found my way back to a trail. I don't know which one. I didn't care to check the map. I just wanted out. I followed it until I saw the trail entrance in the parking lot where my car was at. Call it instinct or luck. But I made it out. I didn't end up being some foul demon's lunch. And I didn't add a 2020 tombstone to that cemetery. When I made it back to my car, I tore the map apart. I decided then and there I was never going back. And you know what? I'm never going to follow a trail that's not on a map anymore. <laughs>